This is video number 15 from Digital Dash University. Uh, we're looking at different topics in linear algebra. In this video, we want to see how can we determine for a given matrix what its eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. And the key concept that's involved is really pretty simple. Um, it turns out that sometimes when you multiply a vector by a matrix, and you go ahead and you do the whole multiplication process, all you end up with is just some constant times that vector. For example, suppose we have this matrix. We'll pick a 3 by 3 matrix to work with. And we multiply by this vector Let's see what we get when we do the multiplication. So we go across and down, and we multiply and add as we go along. So here we're going to have 4 times 1 is 4, plus 0, plus 4 times 1 is 4, so this is 8. Then we go along here for the second row, across and down, multiply and add as we go. Here we have 0, here we have negative 14, here we have 0, so this entry is negative 14. Then here we go across and down, and here we have 4 times 3 is 12. This is minus 7, so that's going to be plus 5. This will be minus 3, so that leaves us with 2 for this entry. So this matrix times this vector gives this vector. Well, we notice this is just 2 times this vector. So we can just write it like this. Now, obviously, with every vector we multiply by this matrix, we're not going to end up with just some multiple of that vector. There's only certain ones that it works for. And these special kind of vectors are called the eigenvectors of the matrix. And the constant that they end up being multiplied is called the corresponding eigenvalue for that eigenvector. So the question is, if we have a given matrix, how can we find out what its eigenvectors are, if it even has any. And if it does have eigenvectors, what are the corresponding eigenvalues for it? And the way we proceed is, oh, one other thing. Suppose we multiply our eigenvector by a constant. Suppose we have just C. Well, a times cx, this is just a constant, so we can just put this over to here. That's equal to the constant times a lambda x, and that's lambda, so that just equals Again, we can put our c back over here, so a times cx is equal to lambda times cx. So you multiply the eigenvector by a constant number, we get a new eigenvector. OK, but let's say we have a matrix. How can we find out what its eigenvectors and the corresponding eigenvalues are? Well, let's bring this over to this side. So we have a minus equals 0, or we could say that would be a minus lambda now lambda is just some constant, some number so we can multiply lambda by the identity matrix for example, suppose this is just a 2 by 2 matrix
and we have this minus lambda, and lambda is now going to be multiplied by the identity matrix. So these now become lambda. So we have this matrix minus this matrix. So that means that we're going to have this matrix, only we're going to be subtracting lambda from all the diagonals on the matrix. So we have minus lambda here and minus lambda here. So that is now this. And this here we're just working with two dimensional space, so the our, com, our vector here will just have two components to it. But here then, let's look at our new matrix that we made. This matrix here must be a singular matrix, because really what we're doing now is we're solving for the null space of this matrix here, which is what we did in the previous video, in video number 14. Well, if this matrix is a singular matrix, then it has a null space. But if it's a non-singular matrix, then the only thing that works here is just zero components for this vector. A non-singular matrix has only a trivial null space. But a singular matrix then it has a null space. And remember from the last video, the dimension of the null space is equal to the number of free variables that this matrix has when we try to reduce it down to row echelon form. Well, if this is a singular matrix, its determinant must be equal to 0. So we have that determinant must be 0. So how do we get the determinant? Of course, we just cross multiply and subtract. But when we cross multiply here, notice we're going to get a lambda squared. So for the determinant, it's going to be some polynomial of degree 2. And that polynomial has to equal 0. That's what the determinant is. So what we're going to end up then is some second degree polynomial where we're going to probably have to factor it so we can, can evaluate, so we can discover what lambda is. Then once we determine lambda, then we can go back to here, put these values in for lambda. Then with that matrix that we have, we can solve for what x2 and x1 are. That's the general idea for finding the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of a given matrix. And really, the only better way to try to clarify it is the process is just try to demonstrate it with some examples. So let's go back to our original matrix that we had written. We had 1, 0, 3, 0, 2, 1 and 4, 0, minus 3. And we want to know, this we had written down before, we knew what one of its eigenvectors were. Besides that one, does it have any more? So what we're looking for is this, or as we just did, we can rewrite this in the following way, our matrix 1 minus lambda, 0, 3, 0, 2 minus lambda, 1, 4, 0, minus 3, minus lambda.
this. has to equal zero. So that means this matrix here must be a singular matrix. That means its determinant must be equal to zero. So let's see, what would be the determinant for this? Find out what the determinant is, set it equal to zero, and see if we can solve for lambda. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and there may be several values for lambda, because this is going to be, looks like it's going to give us a cubic polynomial. We set that equal to zero. We're going to expect that we're going to have three values for lambda, which means then that for this matrix, if there's three different values for lambda, there's probably three different corresponding eigenvectors for the matrix. So it's going to take a while to kind of grind through all of that, and I doubt that we'll be able to do it all during um, to finish it during this video. So be prepared to come back and join us in the next video. But let's see if we can determine now the eigenvalues for this matrix. So that means then we have to take the determinant of this matrix. Remember, this has to be a singular matrix now. So its determinant must be 0. And what is its determinant? So here, we're going to have 1 minus lambda expanding it with cofactors. And that will be times, we make a 2 by 2 submatrix by covering up the row that's in, covering up the column. And you see we have this submatrix. So we have this times this minus that. That's 0. So we're just going to have this times this, 2 minus lambda minus 3 minus lambda. Like this. OK. Then we're going to have 0 here. OK. Then we're going to have plus 4. And now we make this 2 by 2 submatrix. like this. Hopefully you can see it. There it is. That 0, so we have 4 minus 3 times this. So we have 4 times minus 3 times 2 minus lambda. And that must be equal to 0. So let's see what we have. Um, well, here's 2 minus lambda. And here's 2 minus lambda. So we can factor that out. So that will equal 2 minus lambda. And then we're going to have here, make sure we keep everything in focus. we got to go slow so we don't make any mistakes. 1 minus lambda times this. So we have 1 minus lambda times minus 3 minus lambda. And then from here, we're going to have minus 12. That has to be equal to 0. OK. So it looks like then here, let's just keep moving along. Here we're going to have this times this. So we're going to have 1 minus lambda minus 3 minus lambda. Uh, here, that will give us plus lambda squared plus 3 lambda minus lambda. That's plus 2 lambda. And then here, this will be minus 3 minus 12. That will be minus 15.
And here we have 2 minus lambda equals 0. And let's see from this. Um, we could have would lambda plus 5 or lambda minus 3 work here? Let's see. We have lambda plus 5. Yeah, then lambda minus 3, because that gives us minus 15. That gives us plus 5 lambda minus 3 lambda. That gives us plus 2 lambda and lambda squared. And we have this. equals 0. So what do we have? Looks like lambda equals 2, lambda equals 3, and lambda is equal to minus 5. Now if we wanted to, of course, we could have just divided through by this and eliminated that and solved this equation. That's true, but if we did that we would have missed out on one of the lambda values. So that's why we didn't cancel this out here. Okay, so lambda equals 2, Lambda equals minus 5, lambda equals 3. Lambda equals 2, lambda equals 3, lambda equals minus 5. Okay, now what we want to do is, we have three different values for lambda, so we should be, one would suspect that we would have three different corresponding eigenvectors. Well, let's see. What we do is, we go to here. This was 3 minus lambda. So we go ahead. In this matrix, we put in lambda equals 2. So if we do that, what are we going to have? We have 1 minus 2. That makes this negative 1. Two minus two, that will be zero. And three minus, no, this is negative three. We've got to be very careful with that we don't erase things here. Minus three minus two will be minus three plus minus two, that will be minus five. Okay, now we need some space. So we are working right now, for the moment, we are working with lambda equals 2. And we want to find the corresponding eigenvector for that. Okay, well here are our equations like this, and we're going to write this now, as we've done in the previous videos, as an augmented matrix. So we have minus 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 4, 0, minus 5, 0, 0, 0. And before we can go further, I think we're going to have to stop here. Um, we'll quit at this point, come back, join us for the next video, and what we'll do is we're going to determine the corresponding eigenvector when lambda equals 2. Then after that, we have two more eigenvectors yet that we have to determine. So come back, join us for the next video, and let's see if we can finish off the rest of the problem.